that 20% of the input produces 80% of the resulting output. Hey, what's up? Gleb Alexandrov here for CreativeShrimp.com. Creative Shrimp is the place where artists learn the tips and the top, top. Creative Shrimp is the place where artists learn tips and tricks about computer graphics, art, and coffee brewing. And welcome to the new episode of the Ask Gleb podcast. Kale asks, how do you keep a clear image in your head after working on a project for days? Uh, first of all, to keep a clear image, you need to have this clear image. And for that reason, I'd recommend you to have a few references at the very least, before you even start working. Uh, a few reference images and a concept art. This is the best way to obtain the image and keep it throughout the whole process. So, first of all, make sure you have a decent concept art and later on you will be able to evaluate your work and say if you like it or not, if, it, if you're going in the direction you want or not. That said, sometimes your work can surprise you. Basically, follow the change and see what happens, because it can be very surprising and inspiring to explore the different options, uh, the different kind of ways to uh, develop the work. It's a nice way too. Dwight Martin asks, French press or Aero press? And Dwight, honestly, I prefer the coffee from the coffee machine. I'm an old school guy <laughs> in, in regards for coffee. I know that many people like the French press stuff, uh, but that's not my type of coffee. Mason Menzies asks, there seem to be a large amount of people that frown upon post-processing or matte painting. Why do you think this is the case? Mason, that's a great question. And first of all, I think that many people think that post-processing and matte painting is too much of a shortcut. No, it undermines your uh, professionalism. It undermines your ability to create something uh, in 3D and to present it as a 3D work. It's like hacking the Pareto principle that 20% of the input produces 80% of the resulting output. That's kind of hacking. Many people will say that you're cheating if you do that. But honestly, I don't care about this so much because if you think about it, if you, if you go into that rabbit hole, if you want to go deeper, that computer graphics is fake and uh, even modeling is fake because we model using just surfaces, polygons and all that stuff. We don't simulate the substance, uh, the volumetric stuff. You don't simulate the voxels inside your model. You're just playing with the surface. This is cheating, you know, and lighting is cheating too. You can set up lighting in such a way to hide and to obscure the part of the model. And is this cheating, I want to ask. For example, Greg Zahl says that he is more impressed when he sees that the whole work was done in 3D. And there are many different opinions on that. On the other hand, Cinecat Pro says that he is more impressed if he sees that the author used the whole range of techniques, that is, 3D techniques uh, coupled with 2D techniques with post-processing, essentially. So there are many different opinions on that. And I don't give a f about that because I think that post-processing is a leg legitimate stuff to do. And of course, it depends on the task and it depends on whether you like to hack the Pareto principle or not. And of course, it's much more easier to just paint the particles, for example, in, in GIMP or in Krita. Uh, it's much easier to do many things in 2D. It depends on the kind of job you're doing. Uh, Boss Parsley asks, have you ever played inside yet? I'd like the lighting. Yeah, I like the lighting in this game too. And I love this game. It is insanely crazy good. And uh, the art direction in this game is so minimalist with a crazy smart use of lighting. I'd recommend to everybody, play this game. Play this freaking game. It's so cool graphics-wise and also as an existential experience. And it has a, a giant monsters made of flesh and composed of different body parts that uh, are... It's very cool. How, how does Agisoft Photoscan compare to 1 to 3D Catch? 1 to 3D Catch is limited to only up to 80 photos. You cannot have more than 80 photos to reconstruct the model and it is kind of buggy if you look at how it, uh, at how it downloads the stuff from cloud. It has a certain limitations and bugs and it's quite unreliable. But it's free 
and Photoscan costs you some money, but Photoscan is a ton better if you want to create a professional looking Photoscan. That's how they compare. I'd recommend you to get Photoscan if you have some money, but you can do stuff using 1 to 3D catch to a certain degree. Stu Hackenberg asks, what's your favorite brand of coffee? I prefer anything that is 100% Arabica. Costa Rican coffee, Ethiopian coffee, it doesn't matter so much. I don't quite like the taste of Robusta, even if it has much more caffeine uh, than Arabica. So I stand for 100% Arabica. I like the taste of it. Yeah. Syndicate Pro asks, what do you do for work? For work and paying bills. And it's, it's a very good question. Some years ago, I was working in a game development studio as a 3D modeler, but then I got fired and I started my own thing that is called Creative Shrimp. I run this blog up to this time and this is my source of a passive income today. I think that is the way to go. I really want to do my own thing. I really want to work on my own terms and you guys are keeping me afloat. And thank you so much for this. All right, that was Gleb Alexandrov for creativeshrimp.com and see you next time. Make sure to press thumbs up and to subscribe. That will allow me to produce even more videos for you guys. Thank you so much.